The real estate market is hotter today than it was this time last year in Massachusetts. How could this be? We're going to unpack that today using data in the Massachusetts real estate market update for the week of February 6th. And as always, we're going to talk about what's going on in the condo and single family market. But we're also going to be talking about interest rates because it was not a good week for interest rates. And if we're talking about interest rates and that awful week, then we need to talk about the why. So we're going to unpack that as well as to the why it may just have been an overreaction as well. Then there's what we might have been the uh, scariest article that I could have seen with some really big effects on the real estate market that I have read in a while. So I'm going to share my fears with you there. And then there's our luxury house segment. If you like the smell of Yankee candles, then you may want to stick around and take a look at this house in Lever because it is the guy that founded that company and this place is just insane. But first, hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses and I'm one of the state's top agents. If you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. But let's get going with the single family market. We currently have 3,030 single family homes on the market. Inventory dropped again. Inventory is dropping because of a strong buyer demand. We currently have nearly 11% less homes available to home buyers to buy today than just 28 days ago. While the gap of the amount of more houses that a buyer has to look at today versus today last year has out actually now shrunk down to 958 units. And this is compared to the 1,131 units last week. I have to admit, I just really didn't see this one coming. We had 632 new listings come on the market in the last week. Now, 632 is a great number for new listings. The average for January has been 562 per week. So we're 12% above that average, but still, Still, 19% off the number of new listings that came on the market this week last year when 785 houses came on the market. So how is it that the housing market today is hotter than the housing market today of last year? Okay, in fairness, hotter might not be exact, but equal is. We had 683 houses go under agreement last week. So how is this market equal to last year? That is because last week we put more homes under agreement than this same week in 2022 when we put 678 houses under agreement. Yes, it's only only five units, but it is five more units this year. This makes sense because a couple weeks ago, we were reporting about how huge there was a surge in buyer activity with showings. And those showings have now started equating to sales and a lot of them. It is the increase in buyer demand that is what's actually decreasing the amount of inventory that is available to buyers. The supply side of the curve just simply cannot keep up with the demand side. There were 412 homes that sold in Massachusetts for an average sales price of $706,000 and a median sales price of $530,000. And then that months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in zero to five months is considered a seller's market and the closer to zero you get the stronger seller's market it is and this week months of inventory actually stayed even with last week's at 1.16 months of inventory now this indicates it's a strong seller's market and yeah i'm going to continue to beat that drum kick that dead horse there is a huge seller's advantage right now to getting your house on the market if you're thinking about selling your house and wanting to wait until the spring months, then you could miss a pretty great window. I invite you to reach out to me to discuss your personal situation and well, just see if it makes sense. But now onto the condo market. We had 1,747 condos on the market as of Monday. Now inventory actually increased by 10 units from last week, but while inventory increased slightly, the amount of condos available to home buyers actually decreased to 316 units from last week's 385 units. There were 383 newly listed condos that came on the market market this week. Now, this is a strong increase from last week's 293 units, but still 17.6% below last year's pace. We had 327 condos go under agreement. Again, this is 16.3% off of last year's pending when we had 391 units go under agreement. Now, the condo market from an inventory perspective is tight, and there have been some glimmers of strength, but I continue to say that this market is not as strong as the single family market. We had 213 condos closed last week for an average sales price of $778,000 and a median sales price of $525,000. And then that months of inventory, it stayed equal just like the single family market did, but that number was 1.67 months. Do you like hearing what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then smash that like button and I truly appreciate you considering subscribing. Okay, let's
let's talk mortgages because this week was not boring to say the least. It actually, well, it kind of hurt a bit. Interest rates, they shot up. If you want to pause the video and quickly let out a couple of expletives, then I completely understand because that's what type of week it was. First, let's look at how much and then the why. The last couple of days have been a bloodbath. Interest rates shot up a quarter of a point and they did it very quickly. For the most part, interest rates are now the highest that they have been in about a month. So that is the pain of how much. Now let's talk about the why. Remember how last week I talked about the jobs report being a very important piece of information that could have a positive or a negative effect on interest rates? Well, it had a negative effect. And it's because the jobs report just blew the doors off of any expectations. Check out this headline. Jobs report shows increase of 517,000 in January, crushing estimates as unemployment rate hit a 53 year low. Okay, so the question is, why did interest rates shoot up because of this news? Now, the markets ultimately felt that because of these strong job numbers that the Fed and our friend Jerome Powell need to continue to hike the benchmark rate. Now, many were hoping that after this month's quarter point hike, that there might just be one or two left until he actually needs to start decreasing that benchmark rate in order to start stimulating the economy. This is why we have what is called an inverted yield curve. Now, ultimately, the big money feels that because of this monster job report, that might not happen as soon as they had hoped. So interest rates, they jumped to account for this new world reality. But I mentioned earlier that this might have been an overreaction by the markets because the job reports number wasn't really as good as that headline number makes everyone feel it is. Take a look at this. The BLS unveiled a slew of data revisions, which include updating the population controls, which would have the mechanical effect of boosting the labor force and updating seasonal factors, which further distorted the January non-farm payroll numbers. Now, the revisions, in case there was any question, were to the upside and made the establishment survey data appear even stronger, a lot stronger, in fact. There were upper revisions to all monthly payroll reports starting with June 2022. Have you guys heard about the mystery of two to three million workers not being in our workforce and no one really knowing what happened to them? Don't worry, that mystery has been solved with this jobs report number. There was an 813,000 upward revision to the December payrolls report, which was revised from 1.53 million to 1.54 million, and which explained much of where the missing workers went as expected. They were merely just bits in some Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so there's a lot of that, but but here's the big overreaction and the tell that it wasn't as great as well it was all made out to be. The number of full-time workers in March 2022 was 1.32587 million. The number for January of 2023 was 1.32577 million. That means that the total U.S. full-time workforce actually declined by 10,000 people over a 10-month period. But part-time workers soared from 25.908 million to 27.4 million, which by the way, we're seeing a lot of people working a full-time job and then picking up a part-time job to cover the bills today. So that individual would actually count as two in those job numbers. As the Bloomberg chief economist puts it, if it seems too good to be true, that's because it is too good to be true. The gain is mostly due to seasonal factors and revisions to past data. The Fed likely won't place too much weight on this report in formulating policy. So yeah, this was most likely a big overreaction to the jobs report that should shake out in the coming weeks. We have jobless claims data on Thursday. Thursday, but the real big one will be consumer price index on Tuesday. So what has got me so scared? It's this. Fed loan officers paints dire picture. Loan standards approaching record tightness as loan demand plummets. Consumers are running to revolving credit as they're just squeezed by inflation. And this has in turn now created an environment where banks are tightening lending standards for commercial mortgage as well as credit card loans. Banks are increasing lending standards to prepare for this upcoming recession. That creates a spiral effect. Less revolving debt means less consumer spending, which means less economic activity, which means, well, a deeper recession. I guess you could say the good news is, is that the tightening of credit standards won't affect the mortgages backed by the government. Think FHA and Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae products, but just one more headwind for the real estate industry to deal with. And now onto the luxury single family home in Leverett known as Juggler Meadow. Yeah, this place is pretty extraordinary. It is six bedrooms, 16 full and 12 half bath home with approximate above grade square footage of, wait for it, 
98,991 square feet. The property consists of eight structures spreading over nearly 60 acres of just stunning landscape. While there are a total of 16 bedrooms, the main house sports a more manageable five bedrooms. This home has a spa, four tennis courts, two car barns, a nine hole golf course, a stunning pool, an indoor water park, a full size auditorium that is staged equipped with state-of-the-art audio and visual systems. It's got a bowling alley, an arcade, what looks to be a wine tasting room, a basketball court, a fitness center that looks, well, to be nicer than Equinox, and the grounds, they're just stunning. It also has several guest houses, so that way the in-laws and the many friends you're gonna make owning this home, well, they're not gonna infringe on your personal space. It's all done with high-quality craftsmanship and materials throughout. This might be one of the most stunning houses I have ever seen. And how many times did I use the word stunning there? It's overused, but it really hits the mark. The seller's asking price is $23 million. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? My information, it's in the description below. You can also visit youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in all of your information, and then I'm going to reach out to you, whichever way is easiest and works best for you. I love talking about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then throw them in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer you. As I always say, an informed person, well, they're a powerful person. So until next time.